How's it going, guys? We have an easy question for endocrine slash family medicine. A very similar question with similar lab values and vignette shows up on one of the 2CK NBME forms. It's actually retired NBME 4 for 2CK. Okay, so 6 through 8 are the exams that I tell students to go through. 9 to 11 are the ones online. So this question, very fucking similar in NBME 4. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L and my N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now I'll start the clip. 16-year-old girl, she's had increased thirst and urination over two weeks. She's lost five kilos during this time. She had an upper respiratory tract viral infection that self-resolved a few weeks ago. Serum studies show sodium is low at 130 milliequivalents per liter, should be 135 to 145. Potassium is normal at 3.7, should be 3.5 to 5. Bicarbonate is normal at 26, should be 22 to 28. Now, we could say essentially that there's a small augmentation in difficulty for this question in the sense that this patient doesn't have DKA yet. Okay, so I've harped on the point, especially in high yield arrows. You need to know that we do get dilutional hyponatremia in hyperglycemia because of increased osmolality within the vascular spaces that will keep fluid there, okay? That's why we have low sodium here. But I've harped on the fact that the arrows would be down arrow serum sodium, up arrow serum potassium, because if we don't have insulin, we can't drive the potassium into cells, down arrow total body potassium. So that's hyper kalemia despite low total body potassium because when the high potassium in the blood gets to the kidney the kidney is micturating it out that's kaleuresis sophisticated word for micturating potassium and we would have down arrow bicarb down arrow ph metabolic acidosis high on an gap okay so that's uh, the d in mud, mud piles dka and then down arrow co2 we're blowing it off because co2 is acidic to compensate right so we don't have an increase in serum potassium here. We don't have a decreased bicarb. So maybe over EG three to seven more days, this patient will progress to have full on DKA, but we're not there yet, okay? So the question is just asking the most likely explanation. And the answer is RNA virus, okay? And you say, what the fuck? Like, I don't get it. Okay, well, not dramatic. You should be aware that Coxsackie B virus can cause diabetes and sip, die, what the fuck am I saying? Cause diabetes mellitus type one, okay? So uh, there's a six oligopeptide amino acid sequence produced by Coxsackie B that we develop antibodies against, all right? So there's molecular mimicry there. Those antibodies will cross-react with glutamic acid decarboxylase 65 within beta islet cells. So that molecular mimicry is one of the etiologies for diabetes mellitus type 1. Okay, if you look at the literature, there's also various T cell responses, etc. But you should know Coxsack EB can cause diabetes mellitus type 1, as well as dilated cardiomyopathy. Don't confuse that with Coxsack A tangentially, which can cause hand foot mouth disease, of course, and herpingina, okay, which are vesicles within the oral cavity. So choice D, wrong answer, increased consumption of water, psychogenic polydipsia, Choice B would refer to uh, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Choice A would be central diabetes insipidus. Okay, I've made the last clip uh, more on the DISIDH, psychogenic polydipsia type of stuff. Okay, if you do question 470, this is 471. So <clears throat> this could be a lengthy discussion, but I'm just going to end the fucking clip. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.